Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be discussing two of these magnifiers, the Holosun HM3X and the Vortex Micro 3X. The Holosun is around $170, the Vortex is around $250. They're both made in China, and I think the price reflects that. On the value proposition, I think warranty is an important part of that. The Vortex has the clear edge here. It has the Vortex Unlimited Warranty. You can run this thing over with the truck, chalk it off a cliff, and as long as you send it back to them, they'll replace it, they'll fix it. It's 1925. Maybe so, but it's not on the box. It should always be on the box, comforting you, calling out, I'm good, I'll never let you down, but if I do, I'm going to make things all better. The Holosun, on the other hand, is a limited warranty. And the Holosun owner's manual has the following phrase, at our sole discretion, we will repair or replace products found to be defective under normal use. That sounds very limited to me. It sounds like they have a lot of discretion on what to do. So you better be careful when you're using it. Let's talk about weight. These are both with their mounts and the one third spacers. 9.3 ounces for the Vortex. Ten point nine for the Hollow Sun, so just over an ounce and a half of difference between the two. The Vortex is a shorter optic by about an inch or so, and the Hollow Sun also has a beefier mount. It has the the bar in the center and two recoil lugs on either side. So the footprint is much larger than the Vortex. I'm not sure if the recoil logs actually do anything. I don't see much wear on them from all the mounting I've done on its various rails. On the Hollow Sun, you see the QD here is released by this button in the back. The mount is slightly loose, not as solid as the Vortex I would say, but it's definitely not going anywhere as you're shooting. The Vortex is obviously a smaller amount. You release it up front and it seems to lock up much better than the Hollow Sun. Speaking of the mount, here we have a EOTech and a CAC rear sight. If we were to mount this hollow sun, it will fit perfectly in between those two. This is mounted as far as it will go without overhanging onto the rail, and this is mounted on the, the rearmost slot. And we have just enough room for this hollow sun op, uh, magnifier. If you had like a Huey, you would have a little more trouble getting these buns, but not, not terrible. Whereas with the Vortex, you can mount it just a little bit further back. You can see this clears the rear sight, and you have just a little bit more room tight in there. You need to make adjustments. So this looks good, except note that when you mount it, the rear, the optic, ends right kind of by the charging handle, or the slot for the charging handle whereas the hollow sun ends flush with the receiver. So both of these have the same eye relief. And if you choose to mount them in front of the rear sight, you're gonna to have to go with a shorter length of pull on your stock to utilize the micro, just because that inch are so shorter. Whereas the hollow sun will hang up, 
hanging off the edge and it'll give you a little more room. That might not be a big deal to you depending on how you have your upper set up, but it could be, it could end up being a, a little bit of a problem, maybe a training issue if you decide to go with the micro. So you might be asking yourself, why didn't Vortex increase the eye relief to kind of get rid of this problem, get around it? So look at this chart that I found um, on Reddit. I'll link it below. But it has the data on a lot of the magnifiers that are on the market right now. And take a look at the relationship between eye relief and field of view. The shorter the eye relief, the more of a field of view you get. And then the longer the eye relief, the field of view goes down. So I think if they decided to go with the longer eye relief, that would be a, that would be a mistake. I think the, eye, the field of view is an important feature of an optic, and both of these have the same eye relief, and as a result, same field of view. And just to illustrate that point, here is a four power ACOG on my A4. The way this is set up in front of the rear sight, it's pretty much nose to charging handle to get the proper eye relief to get no shadow in, in the optic. Here's a comparison of the ACOG and the Vortex at 600 yards. The, the ACOG is obviously four power and the field of view is probably just a tad larger, wider, with it at four power than the Vortex at three power. To the left, you can see more past the green hut with the ACOG and probably the same amount past the IPSC on the very far right. But again, you're getting one more, getting four power versus three power. Here's a picture at 200 yards comparing the two optics, the, the Vortex and the Hollow Sun. The centering isn't quite right, but I can tell you that the field of view at 200 yards is also very, very similar. You can pretty much see the same amount in front of the 200 yard berm, which is in the center there. And then you can see the three and the 400 yard berms to the right. And finally, <clears throat> here's a picture of the Hollow Sun and the Vortex at 600 yards. Ignore the, the darkness in the Hollow Sun picture. There was a, a cloud in the sky that covered the, the berm just perfectly. But again, field of view is about the same. The glass quality also seems to be about the same. I tried to do some testing at home, 25 yards in my backyard. I put up a eye seeing chart on my back fence. Here's that picture. And again, I can't really tell much of a difference looking at that chart. Seems I can make out the same amount of rows and the details in those rows through both optics. The last thing to talk about are these adjustments. The vortex ones are capped and they're marked up, right, and they're recessed. You need a tool to adjust both of these. Here's the hollow sun, not, re not covered, but they are recessed and they're not marked, unfortunately. The adjustments is just to center the dot in the optic. It doesn't, has nothing to do with zero and doing that was quick, painless, and both worked fine. I've seen a lot of people say that the Hollow Sun is clearly the better purchase of the two, and I'm not sure I agree. I think it's a toss-up, and it really depends on what you value more. 
are you okay just spending less money now knowing that you either won't break it or if you do you'll get something different or if you're the type of person that wants to send back something anytime anything breaks and have great customer support additionally if weight is a big thing for you then the vortex is for you and for me the biggest plus of the hollow sun is the fact that it is longer and it can give you a little more flexibility and eye relief and like to pull and how that works for you especially if you're a bigger guy long arms this might be a little bit tight for you now if you're asking me which one i would go with it would be the vortex just because the warranty makes me feel good inside here's the way i see it ted guy puts a fancy guarantee in a box because he wants you to feel all warm and toasty inside yeah makes a man feel good so that'll be that today guys um tune in for more content and we'll see you around.